This is probably the last guy in the poker world that you would think of as controversial. But back in 2020, Eric Seidel was wrapped up in a poker etiquette controversy when playing against a notable German soccer player. What happened? Let's find out. You've made millions of dollars in your career. Why are you still doing this? Like, what do you have left to prove? I really enjoy it. I hope I can continue playing for a while. It's fun. But before we do, thank you for checking out Poker Boom. If you're here and you haven't subscribed yet, please do and make sure to hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we release a new video. Poker, with its tantalizing mix of skill, strategy, and chance, has produced legends throughout its history. One such icon is Eric Seidel. Seidel's story begins in New York City. Born on November 6, 1959, Seidel grew up in the Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn. Raised in a close-knit family, he developed a strong work ethic and an appreciation for the value of dedication and perseverance. I had two brothers, single mom, and I think it was certainly very hard on her because she didn't have any money. And she had three kids, and the kids were, you know, we were not great kids. His road to poker glory, however, was not linear. He initially played professional backgammon and then became a stock trader before becoming a poker pro. I went to college, and I was, you know, pretty much on my own at that time. And, you know, at some point I was making, you know, pretty good money playing backgammon. And uh, I just ended up quitting school. The transition to poker came naturally as the skills he honed in backgammon, strategic thinking, psychological insight, and a knack for reading opponents proved transferable to the card tables. Seidel's dominance in poker quickly became evident, and he first made his mark in the late 1980s. His early success included multiple World Series of Poker final table appearances, setting the stage for what would become a storied career. From there, I think just my inexperience showed up because he's, he is the best player in the world, and he just, uh, he outplayed me. Eric Seidel, no disgrace, he loses to Johnny Chan, but a terrific turn. His list of poker accomplishments reads like a roll call of triumphs. His breakthrough came in 1992 when he won his first WSOP bracelet in the $2,500 Limit Hold'em event. This victory marked the beginning of an illustrious winning streak, with Seidel going on to secure a total of 10 WSOP bracelets. It takes a lot of luck. It takes everything going going your way. You just hope that when you're in a spot like this, you, you run well and, and the cards cooperate, and they did today. In addition to his WSOP success, Seidel etched his name in poker history by placing second at the 2008 Aussie Millions Poker Championship. It would have been fun to have a little bit of a longer match and a little bit more, uh, but it wasn't meant to be today. Solidifying his reputation as one of the game's greats, Seidel demonstrated a remarkable ability to adapt to different poker variants and outsmart opponents with his strategic acumen. His career earnings to date are a staggering $45.5 million, placing him seventh on the all-time money list. Eric Seidel is absolutely phenomenal poker player. Incredible. Tough as nails. However, even the most celebrated figures are not immune to controversy. And one such moment in Seidel's career that stirred up the poker community occurred during a tournament encounter with German soccer player turned poker player Max Cruz. The debate revolved around the ethical dilemma of whether or not to exploit Max Cruz's late arrival to their heads-up match. Cruz, tardy in taking his seat, fell victim to Eric Seidel's raising, which led to Cruz being blinded out, progressively losing more and more chips. By the time Cruz finally joined, a substantial portion of his stack had shifted into Seidel's possession. Now this was the round of 64, with the victor advancing to play the winner between Sean Winter and Michael Zhang. The situation prompted contemplation regarding Seidel's course of action. In the realm of live tournaments, where the pace is leisurely and conventions lead toward blinding down opponents in such situations, the decision might seem less weighty. Conversely, online dynamics with blinds swiftly eroding stacks in a mere 12 minutes introduce a different dimension where waiting becomes a fair alternative due to software flexibility. Past instances like Lev Gottlieb pausing a tourney when his online opponent disconnected indicate a spectrum of responses in online play. And while some preserve sportsmanship even in smaller matches, others are less inclined to extend such courtesy. The anonymous digital environment underscores the tension between competitiveness and sportsmanship especially when faced with decisions like blinding out opponents. Complicating manners is Cruz's non-professional status in poker. He's a soccer player first and foremost. The act of blinding out a recreational player raises ethical questions, as harsh moves on fellow poker professionals might be more palatable than on someone less versed in poker intricacies. Seidel would go on to admit his move was a mistake. He tweeted, was a mistake. 
Didn't know who it was, but shouldn't make a diff. Plan was, if you blinded out, would give him back entry and percentage. It happened to me twice live. First time, first round guy waited. Second time was semi WSOP Europe. Got blinded out for most of stack. Basically, he pledged to reimburse Cruz's buy-in if he had been blinded out, citing instances where he himself faced a similar fate in live heads-up tournaments. Support for Seidel came swiftly from some quarters. James Chen tweeted, A primarily live reg like Eric Seidel wouldn't necessarily know that online regs would do the same for him if he disconnected. He prob feels at enough of a disadvantage playing online without the latest software tools, charts, to want to make the assumption and risk being wrong. This suggests that Seidel, who is primarily a live poker regular, might not be aware that online counterparts would reciprocate such courtesy. Many others defended Seidel as well against doubters, emphasizing that questioning Seidel's intentions seemed unwarranted. The ambiguity surrounding online etiquette, which varies across games, stakes, and locations, further complicates the assessment of Seidel's actions. And while Seidel's actions didn't breach any rules, the controversy exposed the subjective nature of poker etiquette. In a landscape with no definitive right answer, everyone involved becomes susceptible to judgment and to critique. This incident would go on to spark debates within the poker community about the line between ruthless strategy and unsportsmanlike conduct. Seidel, typically a respected figure, faced scrutiny and had to navigate the repercussions of his controversial move. He would go on to win the match against Cruz, but fell short of the money, losing to Michael Zhang in the round of 32. Zhang made it to the final four alongside Michael Adamo, David Peters, and Alyssa McDonald. In the end, despite this controversy that was a mere blip on his journey, Eric Seidel remains an influential figure in the world of poker. Today, he continues to be a force to be reckoned with, participating in major tournaments and contributing to the growth of the poker community. Seidel has also embraced the digital age, sharing his insights and experience through social media and poker forums. As a seasoned veteran, he's become a mentor to aspiring players, offering guidance on navigating the complex and ever-evolving landscape of professional poker. Eric Seidel's legacy in the poker world is a beautiful tapestry of triumphs. From his early days in Brooklyn to his current status as a poker icon, his journey reflects the dynamic nature of the game itself, a game where strategic brilliance can sometimes blur the lines between honor and cunning. And as the poker world continues to evolve, so too does the legacy of the great Eric Seidel. Every day you show up for work and 99% of the time you go home disappointed. Uh, one or two times a year you win a great uh, tournament and all of a sudden you're thrilled, you're a genius again. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to stick on the channel and check out some of our other great poker content. We appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.